now it's time for our rants and raves, starting with Joanna. Sure. I have a rave for Fox Business Network, which is hosting the next GOP debate next Tuesday, and they have decided to live stream it on their website, which shouldn't be revolutionary, but CNBC didn't do it with the last debate, which meant that you had to be a CNBC subscriber to watch that last debate. And 16% of Americans do not have cable. Some of those are cord cutters. Some of those are elderly people on fixed like income. <laughs> right? Um, no, you know, I still have cable. It is. It, it, these are. This is. This is democracy. The yeah. other thing that Fox Business Network is doing is making some deals with cable companies to unbundle mm -hmm. their network. Yeah, they need to though. CNBC yeah, well, at least got 14 million. I'll be surprised if. The Fox Business you know, Channel gets that. It's a promotional opportunity, definitely, for all of these networks. But you know what? If people want to suffer through these debates, let them, by all means. Mm, I agree. All right. Dan. I have a rant for the National Geographic Society. Mm. Uh, a couple of weeks before they turn over the keys to the kingdom to Rupert Murdoch, uh, they have laid off about 180 of their 2,000 um, staff members, uh, which includes a number of people who work for National Geographic magazine. Now, this is a little complicated. Uh, National Geographic and the Society are going through some tough financial times. But the fact is, this is a $750 million deal. When it's completed, the National Geographic endowment will be a billion dollars. Uh, it just doesn't seem like there's a need to downsize but, one but of the But they said it was preemptory. That, that, that that News Corp was going to come in and do it, and they wanted to be the ones to decide. Yeah, well, I'm sure that uh, I, I'm sure that the Murdochs are very happy mm. that this is happening before they begin, so they don't get blamed for it. I mean, all in all, it's just bad business. All right, Josh. Um, speaking of news organizations having financial trouble, um, uh, right when the show was being taped last week, Grantland, the ESPN oh, yeah. site, was was announced that it was going to be shut down. Um, Grantland is, of course, the site started by Bill Simmons, Boston's own Bill Simmons, a few years ago. Simmons did not get along with ESPN very well. His, he got sort of pushed out a few months ago. And the question was whether this site that he created, which was actually a pretty remarkable thing, um, very smart reporting and writing on, on sports, very smart and at writing on pop culture as well. Um, Wesley Morris, formerly of the Boston Globe, uh, uh, took his film reviews there. Uh, it's such a great piece of, of, of an accomplishment, really. Um, ESPN is this giant corporation that, despite having some troubles and laying off 300 people in the last couple of weeks, um, you hope that they would have found a place to save this this jewel. But uh, instead, they announced that they were shutting it down. And was it too closely uh, associated with Bill Simmons? Do you think? Was I think I think there are probably two factors. One is the Bill Simmons attachment. Certainly, it was unclear what the rudder was, who the rudder was going to be mm -hmm. to guide it forward. And the second is they said they want to get out of the pop culture business. They mm -hmm. felt that ESPN's brand needs to be just about sports. All right, Adam. I want to rave for the sports website Deadspin, which uh, dug into the documents and photos uh, generated uh, through this really ugly domestic assault committed by Greg Hardy, who used to be an NFL uh, defensive end for the Carolina Panthers, now plays for the Dallas Cowboys. He got a pretty big suspension initially when he was uh, accused, charged with abusing his girlfriend. What are we looking at there? We're Is looking that... at a picture. Thank you. That is a photo, one of many photos that Deadspin put online, I think just today, sure. showing what Greg Hardy did to his then yeah. girlfriend's uh, body when he abused her. The case was, uh, I believe, ultimately dropped on appeal. There uh, was some sort of a civil settlement. The woman has disappeared. And Greg Hardy has been welcomed back into mm -hmm. the NFL, lauded as a leader by Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys, uh, and is totally uncontrite. He, when he's asked about this, he, he makes jokes. It's clear he thinks it's no big deal. I love Deadspin taking these really graphic, mm. unpleasant documents and images and kind of shoving them in our face to highlight how the NFL still refuses mm. to take domestic violence seriously, because it won't. All right, finally tonight, I have a rave for Gloria Steinem and her new book, My Life on the Road. Of course, Gloria's been a fantastic writer <clears throat> her entire life, you know, Ms. Magazine, New York, Vanity Fair. She's written for everybody and everything. I got a chance to interview her this week. I knew nothing about this. I mean, she, she lived the life of a nomad. She didn't go to school. Her father bought an antique in one store, drove 100 miles, and sold it at another. That's the way she, her mother was a schizophrenic, was institutionalized. The sister was a lot older and didn't spend much time at home. Gloria, you know, sort of adapted to her father's lifestyle and became a road traveler herself. And if you haven't read it, it really is a chilling and wonderful book. And I was really privileged to get to meet her. She's just one of those people, you know, you've always kind of like... How does she carry herself uh, in person? So smooth and wonderful and not, not, not in the slightest bit arrogant mm -hmm. or, you know, 
just really. All right, that is it for our show. Tell us what you think. Email us, tweet us, or leave a comment. We're always on at beatthepress.org.